The Ratchet & Clank titles on the PlayStation 2 are considered some of the best games to come out for the system, with the first three selling a combined total of 9 million copies. They were so popular that despite going into the next generation, where most 3D platformers would take a back seat, Ratchet & Clank was still a priority for Insomniac Games, releasing 9 titles between 2007 to 2013, and in that span marked the 10th anniversary of the franchise. Insomniac wanted to celebrate by remastering the first three games in the series for the PlayStation 3 in one collection, as part of the HD Classics banner that was trending in the early 2010s. Known as the Ratchet & Clank Collection in North America, the Ratchet & Clank Trilogy in the PAL region, and Ratchet & Clank 1 plus 2 plus 3 in Japan, it was released worldwide by August 2012. The PS3 version was developed by Idle Minds, aka Deck 9, in conjunction with Insomniac Games, and the Vita version, which was released two years later, was developed by Mass Media, who also did the remaster of the Jack and Daxter trilogy. We're going to look at this collection as a compilation. If you want reviews of all the games here, check them out because I've already done them. In fact, this is what I use to review each title individually, which, as mentioned before, are some of the best games to come out for the PlayStation 2. But is it worth picking up this collection? What you get here is the first Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, and Up Your Arsenal. The first three of the duo's adventures, released between 2002 to 2004. Get back in there, Trooper. We've got a planet to save. Sir, yes, sir. This compilation is nothing more than a graphical overhaul, but all the pieces that made these shooter platformers brilliant in the early 2000s remain intact, including the weapons, planets, characters, controls, and the setbacks which the sequels improved over time. Like you can't play the first game with the auto strafe camera mode. Even Mikey Kelly who voiced Ratchet in the first game, his dialogue also remains. Excuse me sir, I was wondering if you were concerned about the uh... Invasion? If you've seen my reviews of the first three titles in the Ratchet & Clank series, then you'll know that I love them, and it was really satisfying to play these games again. I don't know what they'll be like to play after another decade, but it's still fantastic fun now. However, there is one title that should be in this collection, but for some reasons unknown to me, it isn't. Ratchet Deadlocked. The size of all three games in this collection takes only half of a single layer Blu-ray disc, so it can't be a size limitation. Deadlocked is part of the original series and the last one to come out for the PlayStation 2, so not being in this collection sounds questionable, especially if Deadlock got the HD remaster treatment just a year later. This changes nothing. I suppose Trilogy in the title sounds better than Tetralogy. I mean, I can't even pronounce that word properly. I don't know why they didn't just call it the Ratchet and Clank Collection worldwide. I mentioned in my PlayStation 2 review that some games can run in 480p if you have the right component cable, and Ratchet and & Clank Going Commando and Up Your Arsenal are such games, but only in North America. Which is why a Ratchet & Clank title with an output of 1080p and 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 3, regardless of region, is an enormous upgrade. I can take your puny little weapon, and with a few, uh, tweaks, I can turn it into a powerful piece of equipment. I don't know whether it's native or upscaled, because Insomniac Games always mention 1080p whenever they release news of this collection back in 2012, but in order to get this output, you need to disable the 720p option in the display settings of the PS3 menu, which is usually an indication that it's upscaled. Nerd. I like him. There's no official list of PlayStation 3 games that run in native 1080p, so whether this is native or not is up for debate. But whatever you think, or if you don't understand anything I just said, there's no denying that this looks stunning, regardless of resolution. On top of that, it also has 3D support, but like most, if not all 3D compatible games, it reduces the resolution to 720p and the frame rate to 30 per second, and because a lot of the big name electronic companies are no longer making 3D TVs, that gives a perfect indication as to how little we care about this feature nowadays. 
While HD remasters at the time were all the rage, so was 3D. Almost every PlayStation exclusive between 2010 to 2012 were 3D supported, and Sony wanted you to know that. Looks like he's in trouble. I'll say. I've never seen him look so freaked out. However, all the cinematic cutscenes that aren't in-game remain in 4x3, which makes sense because they're full motion videos made for the PlayStation 2. Honestly, the quality of these are still pretty good, all things considered. But as for the stability, I am afraid it does not look good. Even with updates, glitches are many. Not the kind that you need to pause the game to get your breath back from laughing at them so much, but it makes the whole collection feel unpolished. Examples include the underwater bar not entirely disappearing, and going Commando, for a split second the textures disappear when a weapon is upgraded, and in Up Your Arsenal, there was one moment when the gun was stuck on one angle, and whenever I went to first person mode the screen went blank. <laughs> Lawrence! Oh, my mistake sir, dreadfully sorry. There's also a slowdown during certain levels, although after playing Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories recently, this doesn't feel like slowdown at all. And finally, this is also the case with all the PS3 HD remasters I've come across, it's too loud. Here's what it sounds like on the normal volume, so if you have your headphones on, I'll give you a moment. I know, right? Insomniac and Idlemind should have spent more time cleaning up these issues, because this collection came out months before the actual 10th anniversary of the franchise. It's not like they ran out of time. Oh come on, switch off your nerd circuits and have some fun! Fortunately, all of these are minor nitpicks and are only considered frustrating if you suffer from OCD. Too loud? Just turn the TV down. Glitches affect gameplay? It doesn't happen again on the next attempt. And it never crashed or froze during gameplay. I'm just grateful to be able to play these in one HD collection. Unfortunately, there are no special features, just the three games, and that's it. You do have unlockables from the original PS2 counterparts like skins, weapons, upgrades, and challenge mode. The North American version came with a demo of Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, which was released almost a year after this collection. But there's nothing specifically for this collection like developers' commentary, trailers, behind the scenes, or visual concepts. The closest you can get to unique content are achievement trophies, and, oh, if you buy the collection off the PlayStation Store and live in the PAL region, you have the option to download it onto the PlayStation Vita for free if you have one. This collection also implemented the multiplayer component from Up Your Arsenal. When the servers from the PS2 original shut down on June 2012, the collection took its place. But disappointingly, the latter suffered the same fate as recently as February 2018. Preposterous! I will not stand for this! Unfortunately, you have no choice in the matter. To be fair, this was advertised as a HD remaster of these three games, nothing else. And when you have a gaming collection with over 20 hours of near flawless 3D platforming gameplay, potentially 30 hours if you're trying to 100% complete everything, you're definitely getting your money's worth here. You're absolutely right. I am. Sure. Whether or not these three titles will be re-released for the PlayStation 4 as of this review remains to be seen, since the PS3 version can already run in 1080p and 60 frames per second. However, the Jack and Daxter trilogy and Jack X Combat Racing are on the PS4, so it wouldn't be too surprising if Ratchet and Clank followed suit. After all, they've already made an appearance on the PS4 with the also brilliant 2016 reimagining. Who knows? I sincerely doubt that. So is the Ratchet and Clank trilogy worth purchasing? Well, it depends. There's no question that this is a tremendous collection of games, but if you already have all three on the PlayStation 2, you're not missing out. There aren't any new features to explore, and the multiplayer servers are shut down. It's only worth purchasing if you've never played these games, you only have a PlayStation 3 and HD TV, or if you like to play them on the go with the PlayStation Vita. To me, I look at this compilation as simply one way to get these games. And whether or not you prefer HD graphics over the original is a matter of preference. But more importantly, what lies are three games that are masterpieces of the PlayStation 2, the platforming genre in general, and are a must-play for anyone.